Hey, it's Rockin' Robin. Today we're making a creamy hot chocolate pie topped with some whipping cream. And the crust that we're gonna have here is a peanut butter graham cracker crust. Goes together beautifully. It's easy to make, it's delicious, you're gonna love it. And I'm gonna show you how to make it right after my chef joke. Did you hear about the love affair between Mr. Good Bar and Peppermint Patty? They had a baby Ruth. So we're gonna start off here with our crust and we're gonna need some Pamela's Honey Graham gluten-free graham crackers. These are the best I've ever had and I think you're gonna enjoy them too or you can use regular graham crackers if you wish. We'll also need some peanut butter. I'm using Laura Scudder's smooth peanut butter here. It's uh, all natural and I'm gonna be using some butter. With the graham crackers, we're gonna use almost the whole package. These are gonna be so good and make such a great graham cracker crust, you won't even notice that it's gluten-free. This crust is super easy to make. All we do is place the graham crackers into a food processor. I just broke them up to make it easier. And we'll put the lid on and we'll process these up until they're nice and crumbly, like this. Now measure out a cup and a half of graham crackers and you can get the written recipe below the video in the description area. Go ahead and place those graham crackers into a medium-sized bowl because we're gonna be adding some more ingredients to it. What I love about this crust, like I said, it's so easy to make and we don't even have to bake it. It's going in the refrigerator. Remember that butter I showed you earlier? Well, we're gonna place that here in a bowl and we're gonna add some peanut butter to that. Then we're gonna place this in the microwave just on a low heat to melt the butter and kind of help it dissolve the peanut butter and we'll mix it together. Now you're going to have to stir this a bit to get it to combine. Now we're going to take this mixture and we're going to just pour it right on top of those graham crackers and we're going to stir this up until it's all combined. It should end up looking something like wet sand. I will be pouring this mixture into a 9 inch pie plate so just drop it right in there. I like to do it kind of evenly just because it makes it easier to spread out. You're gonna be using your hands or you can use a glass to smash it in. I like to use my hands to press the dough into the plate, so try and get it as evenly distributed as you can. And when you press it in, you're gonna try and make it, you know, the same thickness throughout. Since this pie is so easy to make and so delicious, you're gonna to wanna to maybe think about bringing this in addition to pumpkin pie to your next Thanksgiving. I mean, who doesn't love chocolate pie with whipping cream? Now this will go in the refrigerator for about 30 minutes or until it's cold and firm. Okay, it's time to start working on that creamy, delicious chocolate filling. We'll start by separating four large eggs. Now I find that the way I'm doing it here is one of the easiest way to separate eggs. So if you're game, let's give it a go. All right, just crack that egg and pour that egg yolk into your hand. It won't break in most cases. See what happened there? That egg yolk slipped right out of the shell and into the bowl, and I just picked it up with my hand. If you're very gentle with it, it won't break. Okay, let's see that one more time. I'm gonna crack the shell, and then you're gonna empty out one half, put it down, and then pour that egg right into your hand where your fingers are so that the egg white can just drain right through. Toss it back and forth gently a few times until all of the white's in the bowl, and then place the yolk in the other bowl. To the egg yolks, we're gonna add some sugar, cornstarch, and some whole milk. Give that a whisk until the sugar is dissolved and everything is well combined. Now I've got a small saucepan here in which I'm going to add two cups of whole milk to it. Now for some nice delicious chocolate flavor, we're using Guitard's cocoa powder. And our last ingredient is a little bit of butter. Over to the stove we go. I'm going to heat this over medium heat and you want to bring it to a simmer, but you don't want it to have a hard boil. Now this looks just about hot enough. You want it almost to a boil, but you don't want it to boil. Okay, now we're going to take it off the heat and we're going to temper the eggs. Now what that means is we're going to slowly bring the temperature of the eggs up by adding a little bit of the chocolate mixture at a time and stirring constantly. This is going to cook the eggs slowly and they won't curdle. So I'm going to end up adding slowly about half of my chocolate mixture and just really whisk it really well so that, like I said, it won't curdle. That'll bring the temperature of the egg mixture up and then we're going to pour this back into the pan and put it back on the stove. So I've got about half of the chocolate mixture poured into the egg mixture. 
So I'll go ahead and pour that egg mixture right back into the pan. Now this has the cornstarch in it, so once it starts getting hot, it's going to thicken it up. So we're gonna put it back on the heat, and you're gonna see within you know two or three minutes that it's going to definitely thicken up. Now before it thickens up, we're gonna add some chocolate chips for some extra chocolate flavor. You can use any chocolate chips you like, but I recommend using these Goutard Super Cookie Chips. They're a nice semi-sweet chocolate, but they have a little more sweetness to them and a beautiful flavor. You can see here how much bigger they are than just a regular milk chocolate chip or a semi-sweet chocolate chip. After a couple of minutes of stirring constantly, you'll see the mixture start to thicken like this. At this point, we're gonna turn off the heat and add some vanilla extract. I'll stir that to combine, and then we're gonna have to cool this off before we can put it into our pie plate. How I'm gonna cool this off is by placing it into a pan of ice water. And I have to continually stir this. You see, you can see how hot it is. What's gonna happen is, if I don't stir it, is a film will form on top of the pudding. I'll call it pudding. Then it, if you go to stir that in, then your filling gets kinda of lumpy. So I'm gonna keep stirring this for a few minutes and it should drop the temperature pretty quickly. Once the filling is cooled, then we'll pour it right into our chilled pie crust. Spread it around and get it all nice and even. You're gonna to wanna to place your pie into the refrigerator for at least an hour. I think, you know, four or five hours is probably better. And overnight is probably best. Now for purposes of our video here, I only let the pie stay in the refrigerator for about an hour. And it's still super soft and didn't come out of the pie plate very well, but it still tastes amazing. Oops, I still lost about half of my slice in the pan. Okay, here's the other part. Okay, so here's my slice of pie as it turned out. Best way to serve this is to whip yourself up some whipping cream, homemade of course, and top your pie with some creamy whipped cream. When you sink your teeth into this pie, it is so creamy and delicious and chocolatey, you're gonna love it. That crust with the peanut butter graham cracker, I tell you, it complements the chocolate perfectly. If you need instructions on how to make homemade whipping cream, click the link on the screen and it'll take you right to the recipe. And this video also shows you how to make a pumpkin spice whipping cream to go for your holiday season. Hey, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, let me know by smashing the like button, leave me a comment and share the video so more people can try this fantastic chocolate pie. All right, we'll see you back here next week for another delicious and healthy recipe.